Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to Agri-Food Conversations, brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yochum. I'm a principal here on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, this month's theme being AI and machine learning in agriculture. On today's call, we're joined by Alan Lai, CEO of Profile Print. Profile Print's combination of sensor technology and SaaS platform can be used across the whole food supply chain. Its patented AI food fingerprinting technology synthesizes complex interrelated parameters in sensory data into a single digital fingerprint, allowing users to build more intelligent and resilient supply chains. From the farm to the local processor to the manufacturer, the wholesaler and beyond, Profile Print is connecting customers with the sources of, what they, of the food that they eat. Now, each of you knows that companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this call because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Profile Prince market. You are potential customers for Profile Prince products and services. You've built a company similar to Profile Print, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that this company may face. Now, a few process comments before we start. Um, and uh, Alan, if you could switch to that next slide, that'd be great. Um, uh, we are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information to help profile print, find customers, mentors, and other relationships that can, that can help them grow their business. You can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we'll answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. And this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Alan Lai, CEO of Profile Print, Alan Wall Eyes and Ears. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alan. Thanks so much for the introduction, David. Um, Quick introduction, Profile Print is a digital food fingerprint. Um, once again, I'm Alan, uh, founder and CEO of uh, Profile Print, and I'm based in Singapore. We are founded about four and a half years ago. We are an agri-food tech startup funded now by some of the world's largest food conglomerates, international venture funds, uh, the Singapore government, and some strategic investor. Uh, here are some of the awards that we have won, but really What's more important for us is the value that we are helping our clients to do things better. A bit of the backdrop to why we created Profile Print. Big companies have dominated the global food industry for centuries. Despite digitalization, food supply chain continues to be highly inefficient and overweight. We consumers are held ransom and farmers are price takers. This continues to worsen with the pandemic today. The problem is with little incentive for big companies to change, the supply chain remains overweight and inefficient. We are talking about onerous and inconsistent grading processes, highly dependent on human, that results in long search and match cycles, relying still on sending physical samples. As such, overheads are excessive, incurring costs of warehouse, freight, and manpower. Let's go back 20 years ago when Search Engine 1.0 was based on keywords. User key the keywords and matches against the website, and we all know how Google works today. In the last 10 years, Search Engine 2.0 has evolved to photos. Buyers can easily search for this pair of red heels on Taobao accurately without using words. We believe the future of Search Engine will go beyond one-dimensional keyword or two-dimensional photos into a multi-dimensional molecular signature. Search Engine 3.0 allows buyers to search digital fingerprint based on molecular signature, we call them profile prints. Using our rapid non-destructive analyzer and only 10 gram of samples, our users can upload the profile prints and our platform provides the match. Our solution is a search engine that empowers users to match food ingredients based on a common digital standard, but tailored to each pair of buyer and seller. The market gap, the y-axis is reliability and the x-axis is the ease of you. There is a clear need for profile print that is reliable, easy to use, at a reasonable cost. Our product, akin to sending physical samples to buyers to ascertain suitability, our users send a digital fingerprint for buyers to evaluate either on top using the open AI model for common standards or below the private AI models for tailored standards. All this without the need for physical samples. Our patented technology harnesses AI on the combination of metabolomic signature of the sample and big data comprising meta-analysis beyond the sample data. We monetize our platform via paper report on top and 
private subscription below with a $15 billion total accessible market. So what's our traction? We spent two and a half years on R&D and we commercialized right at the peak of the pandemic. Within 20 months of product launch, we saw strong user traction and revenue growth with over 50 MNC paying clients and more than a thousand users today. Our key team is made of experienced professionals, exited founders and leading scientists with an average age of about 42 and a total staff strength of 35 based in Singapore with sales office in Belgium, China and Japan. Here are some of the verticals that Profile Print is able to solve. We have got tea, coffee, cocoa, herbs and spices to grains, food additives, liquids such as milk, as well as others that can include textile. I'm going to go through three case studies. First, coffee. During the peak of the pandemic, coffee auctions were all held online, but there was no way to ascertain the suitability as the buyers were not able to physically taste the beans. And it's tough to trust just what the sellers say. Let's take a look in the next slide on how Profile Print helped the buyers ascertain the quality as a neutral assessment. Let's see this video clip. You know I'm gonna love this one. It's I heard like this is very good. So much I going on here. Cupping score 83.25. Let's check out what Profile Print has to say. So roasting a bin without tasting, Profile Print within five seconds is able to predict individual parameters. 83.51. As well as the final All right, score. Now to reserve this lot, nine dollars, nine USD. And this is particularly interesting because Laos beans are not famous to achieve high specialty score. As a result, the reserve price is typically low, even though this bean was deemed to be an 83 score. But when Profile Print during the auction predicted it to be also its tree, that gave the buyers assurance. And this interestingly was transacted at almost three times of the reserve price, matching it to a more well-known origin of the same score. What we realized very rapidly is that most of us buyers are buyers and we are able now to have a better way to ascertain quality and its corresponding price rather than to just base it on branding or origin. Next, let's move on to tea. These two gentlemen together would have more than 50 years of tea tasting experience. Assisting method is time consuming, inconsistent, and highly dependent on human tasters. Emotion of the day, what they ate before, and they record in the book just like that. Um, a typical trader would have tasted easily 10,000 teas per week. Today, this young man with barely two years of experience is already scanning the tea leaf without brewing the tea and able to predict the profile and help the master tasters grade a large percentage before asking them to taste. On the right side, you can see that the profile in red is a target of one of the clients. The profiles in gray are those that they have selected to be affordable enough. What Profile Print can do beyond just predicting the taste is to be able to propose a blend recommendation in terms of percentages to put different suboptimal tea to achieve as close as possible to the profile of what the client requires. In the past, this was easily a one to two hours process where based on past experiences, trial and error, to try to blend that taste. Today, you are now able to use the fingerprint profiling prediction using AI to be able to, within a few seconds, get a prediction for them to do a blend. Third, alternative protein. As you can see, one of the main challenge of alternate protein is the ability to ascertain its authenticity. Whether is it a true source or was it just a sticker that has been marketed as one of the products? This is something that Profile Print can identify quite easily. But beyond that, you can also see that when you leave the products over time to oxidize out of the fridge, you see the shift of the signature and allowing us to correlate it to freshness of the material. So clients are looking at us from perspective of raw ingredient because for you to create good protein based on plant, you need to ensure your crop raw ingredients are of a consistent quality. Beyond that, 
the process in between needs to be controlled and the final outcome can also use profile print to ascertain the quality control. Now, these are some of the clients who have used us, currently still using us, and some of the comments they have made, um, ranging from cocoa to coffee to milk, as well as spices. This is a snapshot of some of our key customers and partners globally. Um, we have our analyzers in more than 26 cities across the world and we're located in every continent um, in this world today. And I think this is where I thought it may be useful for me to share with you a quick demo in the next 10 minutes for you to have an idea on how we use the profile print platform. Let me just share my screen right now. Over here, you can see the Profile Print website. It's the profileprint.ai. Let me just click on to the login for me to enter my dashboard. This is the dashboard. On top, you see the basic modules such as quality control, profile prediction, blend recommendation. Below are more the admin functions such as scanning functions and the user management. Let's start off with quality control over here. What we have previously done is to build models for the client. And in this demo, we are looking at cocoa beans. So let me run the first model, which is called Cirrus. In Indonesia, the bean are of differing prices, but visually they look very, very similar. What the client wants to do is to be able to identify that this bean is indeed a serious bean because they do have better qualities and the cost more. So we hence built a model for them to detect serious print just based on the whole bin. Let's now choose some samples from the list that we have scanned. So I'm just going to pop in some blind samples that we deem as non-serious and serious. I'm going to now apply the AI model onto the samples. Within seconds, you can see that those bins that were tagged serious true were passed. Beans that were serious will pass, serious will pass. The non-serious beans, which are the sub-quality beans that the clients are looking out for, whether they're alpha beans or unknown beans, they all fail because the molecular signature is easily identified and does not correspond to what the patterns of a serious bean should look like. So very quickly, this is one of the key ways for them to use it, not just at procurement, QC, as well as before they sell it to clients. Now let's go back to my dashboard. And I'm going to move on to a profile prediction. So a pass and fail is a quick check. But clients typically want to know if it passes, what kind of parameter passes, and how can we better explain to the clients the profile. So in the Cocoa world, they actually use a standard, what they call the ECRI International Standard Cocoa Profiling. And we built a model with very high accuracy of about 95%. So I'm going to click on this model that's been built. And I'm just going to randomly choose maybe three of these bins that just been scanned. And I'm applying the models onto the skin. And you can see instantly, without human tasting, without quenching, without making the liquor, you are now able from the beans to predict as if this has been processed, tasted, graded, and then averaged among the professionals. And this is a typical cocoa bean that is not too strong in cocoa flavor, kind of spicy. You can see the second one is way stronger in cocoa flavor, less spicy, and the third one is slightly lower in cocoa flavor. And all this is done by a quick five second scan and a rapid prediction using the AI model that has been built. Now, let me move on to the last module that may be interesting, which is the blend. Now, in most of the clients, when we talk to them, it is extremely difficult to find exactly what the client wants. So very often, they get to taste what the client wants, they try to match it. If they can't match it, they try to blend it. And Profile Print um, is able to show you how we can help blend. So clicking over, choosing the same profile -pro -pro model that we have just demonstrated, I'm going to choose my target. Let's just say this bin is the target that the client wants. Now, I have to now choose the ingredients that I have on hand that is available and affordable enough. Let's just say these few cocoa nibs are available. Now, it's asking me how much of each do I want to put minimally? Let's assume that I let AI just run this. I don't have a minimum component and I'm going to let the model decide out of these four, 
how do we recreate the target that I wanted? So I'm just now going to bring down here, look at share report, and you can see that the match is very, very similar. The only area probably is slightly different is probably spiciness, but in terms of cocoa amount roastiness, what you need to do is to put in 41% of this, 13% of this, and 45% of this. By doing that, you are now allowing the clients kickstart the planning process much faster and ensuring that you're using a lot more affordable ingredients to achieve what your processes require. At this stage, I think I'll be happy to take on any questions that you guys may have. I'm going to just stop sharing over here. And David, if you have any questions, please feel free. Wonderful, Alan. Well, thanks so much for the presentation. Really exciting work and what you guys are building at, um, at Profile Prints. Um, I'm wondering if you can just speak a little bit to how you think about characterizing and quantifying the value proposition to different types of customers. So like when you're working with customers, are they mostly looking to reduce the amount of time that it takes them to get to a decision? Does it take, are they reducing the cost in some way? Is it a combination of both? Are they improving product quality? What's like the main driver of the value prop for most of your customers? I think all, all those factors you mentioned are definitely um, part of the factors why clients use us. It's going to reduce the cost of operation. It speed up the cycle of sales. But more importantly, what we realized was that this process of doing a buy-sell relationship by sending fiscal samples has continued for the last century. It has not been changed. And I think what's more exciting when we speak to our clients is they see the possibility of now digitalizing a product such that instead of sending the actual product to confirm the suitability, you're now able, almost like an email, to send the fingerprint across you're now also able to let a client now visit your folders of fingerprint. So instead of sending a lot of samples for them to taste and confirm which one they want, now the process becomes almost like they coming into your folder to check, they run against the model. But what is important to note is that each of the buyers will have their own standard. And when you have a digital model to ascertain the suitability, you are now protecting the buyers from actually sharing this standard with their competitors. So in that way, you create a common protocol, yet a protected private model for each relationship between a buyer and seller. And I think this is what we feel is the strongest value proposition for the clients today. Got it. Really helpful, Alan. Um, since since this month we're focusing on applications of AI machine learning in, in food and agriculture, can you give us a better sense of what the what the AI component of what you guys are building is, how you train your model, how your model works, um, and how it how it improves over time? AI is not new. Machine learning has existed for the last 50 years. Models when we're back in schools in the last 25 years has improved, not really because that things have fundamentally changed, but computational capability definitely has improved significantly. The power of data, availability of data, and the speed of data obviously has allowed us now to run the model previously. What I just demonstrated could have spent a week to run 10,000 data points, but I demonstrated live within a few seconds. And I think that is a significant move that allows us now to do a lot more. What we believe in is that every client, every buyer and seller relationship, every product type, do not necessarily follow the same machine learning model, which is why we started off this concept of the basal AI model that we allow the parameters to be auto-selected. So the concept of auto AI means that we do not predefine what model to choose. We do not predefine what parameters to, to choose. Only when the model data are put into the system, it starts running the different possibilities and permutations of parameters that best fit such a model. So by doing that, it takes a lot more time to, for the model building. But when I say a lot more time, you may be surprised, it takes as little as five minutes for a model to be built. Got so it. this awesome. is very much the concept that we do. Great, super helpful, Alan. Um, Alan, what, what are some ways in which the audience can help you going forward? Where do you guys need, where do you guys need assistance and, and how can people get involved? Lovely. I think, I think one of the, the things that we have been working on a lot, right, when we have managed to improve and stabilize our technology is that we realize very quickly technology itself is just an enabler. What is more important is 
to solve the climate problem. So if you look at the agri-food industry, I would define this as our glass. You have a lot of producers, you have a lot of buyers. If we were trying to implement profile print on the producers end, a lot of them may not be able to afford a solution like that. If we try to go to buyers, all the buyers will deem themselves to be the most important because they are paying and it's difficult to penetrate them. What we realized, there's only about 10 companies in between the producers and the buyers. These are the ABCDs of the world. Today, 60% of the ABCDs are already using profile print. They are helping us to push upwards and downwards. And more importantly, a good half of them are already our strategic shareholders. So what we are doing now is to move upstream to the producers and downstream to the user. So anyone listening to us today, if you see the value of opening up the relationship to want to buy from the supplier or want to sell to your customers, instead of using the standard way of sending shipment, checking, giving samples, and you want to digitalize this and you think that that may be an area that can be transformational, please feel free to reach out to us or reach out to some, or reach out to, to I would say, Isolang and see if there's any way we can link us up to speak to you guys for a quick POC or even a deployment of a pilot. Fantastic. Um... Well, Alan, we really, really appreciate your time today. I'm really excited about all the work and progress you guys have, have completed at, at Profile Print. Um, thank you for anybody who's listening to this on the recording as well. Um, we host Agri-Food Conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time. And if you want to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. Um, a replay will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. And new viewers can register for Agri-Food Conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. Um, if you want to continue learning with us, uh, join us next month as we feature companies using precision fermentation in both food and agriculture and healthcare applications. Uh, but Alan, thank you so much for your time. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. My pleasure. Thanks, David. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, David.